Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Now, as we usually say, if there's anything you want us to take a look at, leave a comment down below and we'll see if we can crack on to it as soon as we can. Now, this one I will apologise for because it has taken us far too long to get done, uh, thanks to mainly busy schedules and things like that. But we do now finally have a Nova Vista Alpha to take a look at. Now, this is the synthetic model, simply because the wooden version is completely out of stock with my suppliers. So we're going to have to make do with the synthetic, but obviously action is still the exact same, only difference is the stock. So let's put this thing through its paces and let's see how it compares to the manufacturer's data. And I'm very interested in this one despite the fact that it's a smelly PCP because it seems to on paper offer a hell of a lot for the money. You can find these online sometimes for sub £300 if you know where to look, wink wink cough cough, and they seem to have quite a lot going for them. For instance. They're a regulated gun. They have a power adjuster built into the side of the action, which we'll obviously be testing a bit later on. They've got a two-stage adjustable trigger. They've got an adjustable regulator that you can get to without even removing the stock, which is quite an interesting little feature, especially for the tinkerers amongst us. So there's quite a lot going for this thing. So why don't we then, as we've said, put all of this to the test, test out the reg, test out the shot count, have a look at the accuracy and such, what the gun can do, and let's see if it's just cheap and cheerful or cheap and exceptionally good. So let's move on to features and see just what you get for your money. Okay then, so features. Usually we do this while sitting down, but with this gun that's going to be pretty much impossible because Nova Vista have gone out of their way to make this as awkward as uh, to review as they can, and you'll see why in a moment. As we always do, we start off at the rear of the gun. As you can see here, we've got a pretty nicely finished rubber recoil pad there with a, a, a sort of a striped pattern going through there, or grooving, shall we say, to give you a little bit more uh, traction in the shoulder. Now, the Alpha, I'm very pleased to say, is also ambidextrous, so hopefully you can see. So lefties and righties can have a go with this thing. The rifle also comes with a sling stud at the rear and another one at the front, so you don't have to start drilling into your uh, synthetic stock anytime soon, which is always a big bonus. Will the weight affect the gun too much? That's again another thing we'll look at in a moment. Now as we move slightly further along, this is where we're going to have to switch sides once again. This is what I mean. <laughs> You've got to walk around this thing quite a bit. And you can see here it is a side lever action rifle. You can also see the safety just underneath which uh, is quite interesting actually, it's very uh, very similar to what you see on some of the Kral guns. It's got a sort of barrac copper barracuda pellet that is used sort of like as the safety, a little toggle that you can flick back and forward, which is, again, some people might not like that, but I think that's quite nice. Moving slightly further along, again, we're back around this side, see what I mean now? This is the interesting part you've got here. That is a power adjuster, you can see it in its highest setting at the minute. Now, a little bit of uh, insider info is that when the first models of these came out, the power adjuster didn't actually work. There was no way of getting the gun in sub-12 on its high setting. So I believe if it's the same as we had a new pump that was um, it was in low, but, uh, but with the I believe they probably had the hammer adjuster tightened up, um, and it was doing around 10.8 foot pounds, which is it's pretty good to be fair. And that was just with standard superdome pellets, which aren't the heaviest pellets out there. But we'll get this tested and see if they've managed to do anything with this um, adjustable power system here and see if it does actually work now. As you can see, we've also got the single shot tray in the gun, which obviously comes with the gun as standard. And slightly further down, you have the multi-shot magazine, which we'll be taking a deeper look at a little bit later on. Back up to the rifle, you can see you've got a, quite a nice metal shroud going along the barrel here, which uh, is also baffled, which we'll be uh, taking a little bit of a look at a bit later on. And down here, obviously, we have the cylinder, which is neatly tucked away inside the stock, which does include a regulator, which is interesting on a gun this cheap. This is even cheaper than an Artemis M16, which is, um, well, interesting to compare them side by side, see how the Alpha does. Moving slightly further along, you've got a barrel band there, keeping things nice and secure, and you do have a dust cap on the end of the cylinder, which is always a nice little addition. Pressure gauge, unfortunately, you can see the, uh, this is brand new at the box, you can see the, um, the polystyrene still sort of stuck around the um, protective film on the pressure gauge there. Pressure gauge is on the wrong end, unfortunately, it should be in the stock, but it's not the worst thing on the planet really. You just might get an emergency nose piercing one of these times. The gun also has, if I can find it, it's a bit awkward to see at the moment, but on the underside of that stock, it also has a regulator, which you can adjust, and I'm sure the tinkerers and such out there, don't play with that if you don't know what you're doing, I'll say that here and now, but 
If you've got a, a chronograph, I'm sure the tinkerers out there will probably have an absolute world of a time playing with that thing and seeing just what they can get out of it. But with this, we're leaving it in the configuration that it left the factory in, so we can give you the fairest test physically possible. So that's it for features for the Nova Vista Alpha. It's pretty good. Oh, and you've also got the that we completely sidestep, one of the most important parts of the gun. You do have a two-stage adjustable trigger with the Alpha as well, which again we'll talk a bit more about when it comes to the handling section. So overall for the money, it's an incredibly well-spec gun. But that doesn't mean too much if it weighs a ton and nobody can carry the thing. Could be a sign why they put those sling swivels in there perhaps. So let's get the scales out and see just what it comes out at. Okay then, so we've got it on the scales, let's take a look. As you can see, the rifle comes out at 6.7 pounds, so despite the humongous size of the thing, it's actually a pretty light thing. So, we know the weight, but do we know how it's balanced? Let's move on to the handling section and find out. Of course, before we start taking some shots with the thing, we'd better see how you load the mag. Now the mag on this is actually pretty damn simple to use, unlike some of the cheaper end mags where you've got to spin it round and put one through the, uh, the back arse first. With this one it's simply a case of spin the mag all the way around, load your first pellet just the normal way, straight through the top, and then after that simply load the rest, same as you did the first, through the top, whilst spinning the mag anti-clockwise until essentially you are pretty much done. Sorry if I'm fumbling this slightly, it's because I'm doing this looking through a camera and it's not very very easy to do. Plus you can see I've got my girly gloves on at the moment because it is absolutely freezing out here today. The other interesting thing with this mag is you can see here, you do have a shot counter with it as well. And what happens is, if you can see that little circle there, as you see the mag, it'll be poking out the side of the gun on the left hand side. So as you're shooting the gun, say you cock it and it loads the next pellet, you'll see this little circle will dip and spin to number six so you know exactly what's left in the gun again i'm sure it's something that's probably cheap to do on a magazine but not all mags have this sort of thing and it's always nice to know what you have left so that's how you load the mag so now it really is time to put the thing to the shoulder and see what we think so let's move on to handling right then so handling well first things first you may notice we've got a slightly different uh, onset location today uh, that's simply because well to be honest they're sawing up a load of wood around the farm and you probably wouldn't be able to hear me over the sound of chainsaws firewood uh, processes and such like that so you'd probably say actually the sound quality was better <laughs> but yes today we are outside in the lovely uh, not exactly warm British uh, winter atmosphere. So uh, yeah, let's uh, soldier on out here and uh, see what you think. Again, also, if you prefer it out here, let us know and we'll uh, maybe film out here a bit more. Again, sorry if I've got the glasses on look a bit like a burk. I promise you it's nothing to do with the night before. It's simply the fact that you can probably see that sun is right in my eyes right now. But as we said, can't complain. British winter time, you don't get much of it. So Nova Vista Alpha handling, what do we think? Well, first things first, as we may have shown when we weighed the gun, it is absolutely as light as a feather. Even with that scope on, which isn't a huge one, don't get me wrong, it's just a three to nine by 50 scope, but it's still, I mean, you can carry this, I mean, you've got sling swivels anyway, but you can carry this thing all day long and it just would not even harm you in the slightest. You don't even have to be a particularly big chap or last, shall we say, to uh, enjoy this gun pretty much all day long. But let's put it to the shoulder and see what the balance is like. Now, as stated, this is not the biggest scope in the world, but, I think thanks to the weight and the balance of the gun, you could actually afford to scope this up and you still wouldn't really have a massively heavy gun on your hands. I mean, the balance is not quite perfect. It's ever so slightly, if you can see that hopefully, slightly further forwards of center, but it's definitely not terrible. It's one of those things where, where the gun is so strange in its own way with the whole sizing compared to the weight. It's definitely one that you want to shoulder. Um, I don't think this, weight bias shall we say is really going to upset you too much but let's actually shoulder the thing now and talk a little bit more about the stock because this is a weird one because it's not the most plush feeling synthetic stock on the market for instance hopefully we've got the lapel mics on but hopefully you can hear this it's a little bit not thin but it is i know obviously it's plastic but it's very plasticky plastic um, there's definitely worse out there but why i say it's weird is because although this is definitely a bit on the not particularly plush side 
it has got a nice bit of sort of almost like fake plasticky stippling going along with the uh, forestock if you can see that here and we've got a little bit more on the grip here as well which again it doesn't hide what the stock is really like but at the same time it's nice to have and it does definitely give a little bit more traction there more than some of the cheaper spring guns that we've had where they've had the very ultra thin checkering which is essentially just there to be looked at sort of thing this actually does serve a purpose so well done there now let's talk a little bit more about the cheek piece now the cheek piece is quite a low one um, for instance with this you might be able to see i'm having to bring my cheek up just a tiny little bit to see clearly through the scope it's not like some of the other pcps or guns we've reviewed on here where like the artemis m16 for instance if you take a look at that it has got that really nice raised cheek piece where your eye oh, pretty much lines up perfectly to the scope and if you want to see what i mean with this um, if you can shoulder one of these without a scope on, you'll notice your eye, as standard, is looking pretty much straight just over the top of this rail here. If this had standard sight, open sight, something like that, what a setup to have. With a scope though, you are ever so slightly coming up, or at least I find with my head that I'm coming up just a little bit. But again, it's not bad. There's definitely 100% worse cheek pieces out there. The thing is comfortable, and like we said, because of the lack of weight, you can still hold the thing really extremely still let's have a look at this uh, get a feel for the side lever now that's, that's not too bad i mean it's, it's a little bit and i obviously can't see it but it's a little bit mushy feeling it's not like um again like we said the artemis and the crow rifles for instance you get maybe a slightly more solid feeling and smoother side lever but this one it's a little bit mushy maybe again with a bit more use it will wear in just a little bit let's give that trigger a go now first stage if you can see that admittedly this is a proper adjustable two-stage trigger unit first stage is very loose shall we say but let's let's just give it a squeeze we are empty at the minute you can see a single shot tray there at the moment so let's just give it a squeeze yeah there's a tiny little bit of creep and then you get to that second stage let's just give that another cock and you might be able to see see what i mean so if i see here it's a very loose and we get to here you might not be able to get to this point you might not be able to see it but you get a little bit of movement like that if you could see that then and then finally off she goes it is nice and light i'll give it that it's nice and light the trigger blade is plastic but again at the price of this we sell these for 299 you really can't complain about that um if the gun had a, a much bigger badge on it shall we say and say double the price then i'd be picking on it be rest assured about that but it's not a bad unit it's quite let's have a look have a look through the scope give it a go yeah it's not going to pull you off it's not too bad and again you have got that adjustment there if you wanted to have a play with it and really see what the gun feels like when it's had a play and obviously this is uh, a pcp so there's going to be very minimal recoil on this some of them can have a very slight nudge um, this one though i mean you can see for yourself one hand there is just nothing there and the gun also you can hear that shroud is internally baffled so if we give that another go bear in mind there is no pellets in this so it is going to be louder than when there's a pellet in there and there's next to nothing there the loudest thing seems to be that hammer spring just going clink and sending the pellet on its way if there was one in there but overall i'm pretty impressed to be fair um the stock again like we said it's not uh oh yeah plush like we said it's not the most plush synthetic stock it's not like some of the bsa's like the ultras you can see that have almost got that rubbery lovely rubbery feel to them it's not like that it is a very plasticky feeling plastic stock but it does do its job and again like we said when it comes to handling the gun, despite its size, it feels exceptionally pointable and you're not going to tire with it. I'll put it that way. So if you're not into your heavier weight PCPs or you may have been put off at this because of the size, definitely give it a shoulder before you write it off your list because I think you might be surprised when you uh, actually give it a go. Now, the last little thing we're going to look at because we've gone off of this a little bit is that safety. Now, hopefully you can see that there. This is what I mean when I said it's like a little barracuda pellet, a copper uh, barracuda put on the side of the gun because it literally is pretty much that it's very similar to how the crowl safeties operate and it's quite nice and simple to use quite satisfying to use i mean the only thing is it doesn't really come to the finger all that amazingly well but at the same time i've had worse i'll put it that way so overall handling wise from me the nova vista alpha gets a pretty huge thumbs up so far but that's obviously we're not even probably halfway through with this thing yet i mean it's not a whole lot of good if they tell us it's regulated but it's got a spread of 100 feet per second and out of that 100 feet per second spread it's only good for three shots so why don't we get the chronograph re uh, all rigged up and ready to go and see what the thing can do over the chrono so let's go get that out and have some fun
GoPro, stop recording. Okay then, so chronograph time. The rifle has been filled up to 300 bar and is off to our left just here. Today we're going to be using the H&N or Remington Field Target Trophy pellets, which are 14.66 grains in weight. And here you can see the camera stand and the phone itself. As always, we'll be panning the camera down so you can see a live reading of what the gun's doing. And as always, we're going to be looking for power, consistency and shot count. So let's see what a 299 pound gun can do through the chrono. So then, chronograph results, what do we think of the Nova Vista Alpha? Well, I'm just going to say this, it's quite possibly one of the most annoying guns to chronograph that I think I've ever tested. And the reason why we say that is because if you've seen some of our other videos, you'll see we stop filming when the gun is consistently sub 10 feet pounds. That's the point where I'd say it's not really high power anymore. You're dropping into, say, medium power territory. It's not really going to come up from that if it's consistently sub 9. Now, with this, you can see you had quite a few shots. Hopefully you can see that down here. As soon as we started, 11.45, 11.18, 11.22, it was definitely in the higher power realms here. Now, the interesting thing, and this is what I'd actually set the gun up for, is when we get to where is it It was about 1076 here we go when you get to around say the 69th shot which i checked was just about 250 bar in the gun it seems to stabilize itself and it hangs around say the from around 11.7 to 11 three ish feet pounds and it just hangs there as you can see pretty much forever after this, it does start to drop very slowly into the, the 11.2s. And you get moments, like I'm sure you'll see in a second, where we see like a 9.99 here and we think, ah, there we go. This is where we'll, uh, a few more of these and we'll stop filming. But then, oh no, wait, hang on a second. It picks itself straight back up again. You can see another 9.9 .9 here. And once again, it picks itself straight back up again. You can see it does it a few times until finally on the 188th. No, hang on, I'm wrong, not 188th. The 192nd shot it just seems to very steadily drop off and you can see we've got five shots there where it's sub 10 and it's at the point where yep this is consistently sub 10 feet pounds this is where we stop but if you're talking about how many usable shots you have let's see let's cut it off at uh let's have a look where is it consistently let's say 10.2 let's be extra harsh so here you go, 11, uh, 10, 3, 10, 2, 10, 2, 10, 1, 10, 2. So it creeps around there within around 147 shots. You've got pretty much full power shots. If it was me, like I said, I would set the gun, adjust the hammer, so as it's around, say, 10.8 feet pounds from 250 bar downwards. That way you know it's never going to creep over unless you go above or go towards the 300 bar. It might get a little bit close, but again... It all depends on what you're going to be filling it to. Always chronograph your gun when you get it. Obviously, we like to do it for our customers anyway. Every gun that turns up is tested, so you know what you're getting is going to be top-notch. But that's what I would personally tune the gun to. And again, these are FTTs, so with the JSB, it is potentially going to be a little bit faster than what you're going to get an FTT up to, even though they are slightly heavier pellets. So, But if it was me, I would be going... 250 bar, work on that hammer, make it so as it say, like we said, maybe high 10s, 10 10.8, 10 10.9 feet pound. That way, even if you did all of a sudden, because say you had, you did want to go to 300 bar with it, you're still not going to be 12 foot pound, but you'll have a lot more power through the mid range. And again, what you get as standard anyway, you've definitely got, well, you, you can see here at 100, it's still 10.58, 10.6, 10.5, 10.6. With 100 shots in, you've still got a ton of full power shots and I was going to say, if you want to really look into it, it only starts to really drop below 10 after, let's see, can we get it uh, properly this time? Yeah, from the 192nd uh, shot onwards, that is when it drops below 10 feet pounds. So it's got to be said, it's got some serious bloody lungs on it. The only thing, like we said, is that it does seem to very gently lose its power the more that it's shot through. But it's only really when it gets, say, 
10 1, 10 2, something like that, that you'd really, depending on your range, notice any difference in point of impact. So, and even consistency through most of it, I think for around 30, was it around 20 or 30 shots? We had a spread of around seven feet per second. So, it's pretty damn good. I think for, like we said, for a 299 pound gun, one that you can adjust the hammer on and the regulator, but please be very careful with that. You can't complain, I'm being honest. I am, well, you can color me impressed, I'll put it that way. But consistency and power is nothing without accuracy. So why don't we get it filled up? And no, we're gonna do one little test first, actually, because as we mentioned, there is a power adjuster on this thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it up to say 250 bar. That way we know what it's doing at 250. We go back up here around, I believe it's around 10.7. It was doing at 250. 10, 8, 10, 7. So we're going to fill it up to 250 bar. We're then going to turn the power adjuster into its low setting. It's in high at the moment and see just how much of a difference there is. Like a bit with our crowd review, we'll go hot shot, low shot, hot shot, low shot. So you can see roughly what difference it makes. So let's get the power uh, adjuster tested. And then after that, I think it's time we had a bit of fun and uh, saw what that Nova Vista barrel could do, don't you? So let's move on to our power adjuster. Okay then, so power adjuster testing time. We filled the rifle up to 200 bar. We're using the super domes once again, and the first shot we're gonna take is in high, just so we can see roughly what the gun's doing. Remind ourselves what the gun's doing in high mode. So like we said, this is 200 bar. Let's give it a quick squeeze. 10.65, just to get an average, let's just do one more in high. So we can have a look. So it's 10.6, let's go again. 10.72, so 10.6, 10.7 in high. So let's crack it off now to low, using the exact same pellets, RWS Superdome. And let's do a few shots and see what this low setting, what difference it makes. So 10.6, 10.7. 10.4, so not really all that much, if we're being honest. Let's go again, let's do say two, three more. 10-4. See, it's not making quite the difference as what perhaps we would have been hoping for. So let's have a look. Let's give it one more go. 10-5. And one more. And as mentioned, this is in the low setting. So one more in low. Error. Typical. <laughs> let's do that again. One more. 10 3. Okay, then, so just one more just to be sure. Crank it up to high and let's take a look. 10 3. Error. <laughs> We're not having the best of luck today, are we? All right. Let's go, one more. Yeah, 10, six, 10, seven again. So the power adjuster, well, it works, but not as much as perhaps you may have hoped it to, uh, to have done, shall we say, we'll put it that way. But overall power adjuster, you seem to be losing around 0.2 of a foot pound. It's not really much of a selling point for the gun, at least with this one, for being honest. But again, it technically works. We'll put it that way. Not as much as perhaps we would have liked, but it is there. So that's chronograph results and the power adjuster tested. Now we'll move on to the fun part and we'll do a little bit of accuracy testing. What we'll do is we'll set the target up to our 30 yard mark. Um, we'll do some testing there and I'll do some testing off screen, see which pellets it likes. And what we'll do then is a quick couple of groups with the pellets that it seems to enjoy and we'll get that filmed so you can see exactly what the gun's like when it's actually being shot. So we'll get that done and then we'll move on to final verdict and see just what we think of the Alpha. But I think so far, I think we can definitely say it's proving to be quite the interesting article. So then, let's move on to accuracy testing. Okay then, so accuracy test results. What did we get off screen? Well, we've got a fair spread of pellets here from different sort of price brackets and such. And up the top, you can see we've got our premium examples with the rifle premium series. We've got our field target trophy pellets and the air arms Diablo fields. 
down here you can see we've got a bit more of a random spread with on the left we've got the SMK blacks which have proven themselves on this channel before the super domes which don't really need any real introduction the SMK victory heavy shocks which once again once again I do believe have performed pretty well on this channel and the wasps which are a pellet which I'm forever saying don't go off here say when it comes to the blue tin trust me try the purple because they'll genuinely put a smile on your face or they'll surprise you we'll put it that way I've had some very good results in the past with them so how did we get on well first things first let's get the one out of the way that to be honest I expected to be the best but actually ended up being the worst um, the air arms Diablo fields did not for me at least work very well in this rifle at all uh, we've got a hell of a horizontal spread as you can see going on here and we've got a bit of a ver vertical spread as well with one pellet going way high now we'll mention these are straight out of the tin there is no weighing going on here at all and I can hear a few people already through the internet going oh you really got to weigh them Dan which you may be true when you say that what you're saying may be the truth but at the same time it's taking us ages to get this video done and yeah, that would make us take even longer we'll put it that way but you can see here the spread was not very good at all we actually put a few more pellets through this one to give it a bit more of a chance and see maybe as we get a bit more lead down there will it decide to tighten the group up and you can see it just it just didn't if we're being honest so moving on next remington thunder field target trophy or h&m ftt now if i get my coins out my highly professional group measuring devices you can see We've almost, and bear in mind this is further away than we usually shoot, this is 30 yards. We've pretty much got a five pence group straight away. There's a bit of vertical stringing going on. Again, this barrel has just been cleaned, it's brand new, so it could simply be a case it's got to let itself in and your consistency will get that little bit tighter. But you can see that is five pence all day long. After this, we have the Rifle Premium Series. Now you can see there's two target cards with this one, and there's a very good reason for that. That's because our first group, which is actually this one here, there's six pellets on this card, and granted, maybe the other three of them missed, you never know, but I could quite clearly hear the impact. We've got one very low, and I think we've got about three here, and I think we've got two in that hole there, because you can hear that we've got the wooden board behind the target card and the target holder, and you can hear the difference between card and a wooden board, and it was very cardy, it was quiet, but it was very cardy when we were sitting this. So after this, we had another go, and you can see here, it's not a bad group, shall we say, it's, it's pretty good, I mean, again, you're pretty much sitting under five pence piece. Now granted, the sharper viewer of this will see there is a mark here, and, well, yeah, your suspicions are correct, we had a pellet that struck the metal frame of the target holder, and you can see it sort of left a tiny little bit of like an imprint here. But again, you're looking pretty much five pence group. Now we get to the bits I'm actually more interested in, if I'm honest, as we pretty much know those top three pellets should group fairly well. And now we get to the medium and lower end gear. So let's take a look at the SMK Black Domes. Get that out of the way. Again, there's a bit of inconsistencies going on. We've got two just flying off down here. Again, as mentioned, this is a clean barrel, so no lead through it. But even so, look at the main cluster. You're looking sub five pence piece. Again, if this gets some more lead down it, will they move up to there? Possibly. Could they have been heavier pellets? After all, it is a cheaper make. Again, quite possibly. Then we get to the super domes. Not great. <laughs> it's not bad, to be fair, again. Main cluster, five pence, but with this one, you've still got the two hanging out down low, like with the blacks, but again, could tighten up with a, a, a more bladed through barrel. SMK Victory Heavy Shock. And you can see what's gone on here. We've got two have gone way low down here, or three. And the reason behind this is because when we was first shooting, we was aiming, as always, at the ball. And obviously, because these are 20 plus grains in weight, last time we weighed them, it's gone way down here. So what we've done is we've actually aimed at the one here, at the point scoring uh, card. And you can see the main cluster, it's interesting because you've got three, three, and we fired another one off just there. But, once again, fits under the five pence piece. This earlier group most certainly doesn't, but the grouping here does. A little bit scattered with a huge gap in the center, don't get me wrong, but not too bad. Now we get to the wasps, and I'm really, really glad that this happened. Because I'm sure you all think I'm nuts where I say, trust me, especially if you're on the air gun forum and things like that, where I say, trust me, try the purple tin or the 177 modern wasps. They're, in my opinion, just as good as the older wasps because when I pick this five pence piece up, I mean, I won't even put it over it. Just look at, look at that. 
And that once again is a five or six, I can't remember, I was having a bit, bit too much fun. Five or six shot group at 30 yards. I'll just pan up. You might be able to see, we have taken the target down, but there's a little piece of wood that we're using as a backstop here. You can see just there, that's much further than where we usually shoot. But how about that? You're looking about six, seven quid a tin. Perfect. In fact, in general, the groupings, the main clusters, are perfectly pretty much under the five pence piece. It's one of the most forgiving barrels I think we've ever shot on this channel. I'd say it's even joint with the, um, possibly the Zabroya is what we've tested on there, like the Kozak FC, because that was a surprising little gun as well, with a pretty excellent standard barrel. But these are the best groups what we got off screen. Now what we're going to do is try our damnedest to replicate that on camera. And the pellets we're going to test, uh, we're going to use the rifle field premiums, we're going to take six shots with the single shot tray. And again, we're going to aim dead center. So expect the pellets to land down here. Well, actually, no, what we'll do with the, the premiums, we'll aim at the one, like we do. So the pellet should land just off to the left here somewhere. We're going to take the FTTs and we're going to take the wasps. And we're going to do six shots with each tin at 30 yards. And again, we'll try and capture all this on camera. And let's see which one wins throughout the day. What I might do off screen is I might actually put a few more pellets through the gun just to lead that barrel in just a little bit more and see what we end up getting. So, let's see what the Nova Vista Alpha can do. But so far, so good. Okay then, so back to accuracy testing time. You can see now we're at our 30 yard mark. Now the gun, in the time it's taken to record our last segment and this segment, has had about, say, another 250, 300 pellets through it in my spare time. So it's definitely a bit more leaded in than what we had before. Now the three tins of pellets that seemed to perform the best were the HN Remington Field Target Trophies, the Rifle Premium Series, and believe it or not, the 2-2 Wasps in the purple tin. So let's start off using the multi-shot mag at our 30 yard mark. Now the gun's leaded in with the Rifle Premium Series in 2.2. And now let's see what the gun's capable of. Now remember, 299 pounds, brand new. So this should be quite interesting to compare it to some of the other rifles we've tested. So, let's move on. Next up, the Remington or HN FTT. And finally, the good old new wasps. Okay then, so our 30 yard accuracy test, now the gun's actually had some lead down it and what do we think? Well, it's actually quite an interesting one because if you look, starting off with the worst group by quite a long shot, we've got the Remington HN FTTs. Now looking at it, you can see it's actually, if anything, I might even argue it's groupings got worse since it's got leaded in. I mean, here's a, a 20 pence piece. It's almost a 20 pence group, just about at the 30 yards. And again, that's not bad, a 20p group, 30 yards, you could definitely hunt with it, not too shabby at all, but it's not what I was actually hoping for. Now, next up after this, things get a hell of a lot better, and we have the Rifle Premium Series. Now, this is once again a full mag, you've got 10 shots going through, and if we pan that down there now, you can see that is pretty much a 5 pence group. Again, all shots are rested, so there's going to be absolutely minimal um, shooting error from the shooter itself going on that big fleshy bit that pulls the trigger but yep 10 shots under a five pence piece now this is the bit now i saw this bit coming because obviously i'm going to be testing them off camera when i'm putting the lead through so i know roughly what's going to win and what's not but the wasps now if you're a member of the air gun forum and such websites as that you'll see me banging on about these quite a lot because they've got a really rubbish reputation but whether they've changed anything i don't know because if you take a look Again, that's the exact same amount of shots. If we 
push this 5p piece across you can see that it is absolutely under that five pence piece again your group's going to open up if you used to do that unrested i'm sure it would it'd open up a bit as with all guns but 299 pound rifle it's got its flaws but come on that's pretty good <laughs> now i did also because it's got a strange taste this gun you'll notice that there's no jsbs on the tests at the moment and that is simply because yeah i am a firearms dealer but believe it or not we do not stock jsb at the moment so the closest thing we had at the time was the air arms pellets which fired all over the place so what i did when i was off camera i thought do you know what these wasps are unbelievable i might see if milbro can uh, do the same thing and no they didn't <laughs> so it's literally it is just these wasps and again i know we're going on a tangent now but if you've got a pcp say 22 or even spring gun in 22 don't bligh but bligh don't bligh the light blue tins of these because to be fair they have earned that terrible reputation of being a crap pellet buy the purple tin and if you've got 177 buy the standard red tin now I say that as well because I've since been feeding them through my Artemis M16 range gun slash toy, if we're being honest with each other, and it is absolutely pellet on pellet on pellet with them to the point that I'm tempted to redo that review just so as you can see just how bloody good those pellets are. And again, you're looking at about six quid a tin. Definitely try a tin, no matter what gun you've got, give them a go, I think you're going to be surprised. But this was done, as mentioned, with the 10-shot magazine, and you can see here, all prepped and waiting, we have got the single shot tray ready. So. Why don't we get the single shot tray in the gun, set the uh, target card back up there, you might be able to see the card holder at our 30 yard mark, and let's see exactly what the gun can do with the single shot tray, because if what they tell us is correct, it apparently will get even tighter than what we have there. So, let's get filming. Okay then, so our 30 yard test with using the single shot tray. Now if we take a look, hopefully you can see both groups in the picture. The interesting thing is that with the single shot tray, the group actually seemed to open up instead of uh, getting tighter, which is what you'd normally expect. Now granted, and I'm going off memory here now because this is a different day, uh, but I do believe the wind was perhaps slightly picking up when we did the, the 30 yard test with the um, single shot tray, so that could be the reasoning behind it. But just to uh, recap you can see here the five pence piece against the magazine group and you can see there that would comfortably fit under that 5p piece and we've got the same here with the single shot tray and you can see here if we just scooch it over once again perfectly sits under a five pence piece now i don't like saying this very much because we all get sick of reading it in magazines and sometimes to an extent you can have the worst gun on the planet but if it's cheap they'll still say it's excellent value for money but again, when you consider just how little these guns cost, these alphas, and they're still capable of this at 30 yards, rested, granted, but capable of that at 30 yards, that is pretty damn good. It has got to be said. But anyways, that's it for our accuracy test. Let's move on now and test just how quiet this gun is with that shroud on there. So let's get it cocked and let's see how it compares to the other guns we've tested on this channel, such as the Artemis M16 and the PR900. Now that was the first model PR900, as there is now a Mark II out, or I call it the Mark II, which comes with the silencer like you'll get in the CP2 rifle combo kit. So with the Mark I PR, I believe it was around 70, 75 decibels, and I think it was roughly the same or slightly quieter with the M16. I think it was around high 60s going off memory. So let's see how the Nova Vista Alpha compares. Right then, so sound testing time. We've got our very high-tech sound recording equipment, which is a Huawei phone with a badly fitted screen protector, which is right next to the barrel, as you can see here. The other thing to bear in mind is we are in a very loud and echoey barn, and even just me talking like this, you can see it's going up to like 50, sometimes even 60 decibels. So it is, you are going to get the loudest result here, I'll put it that way. So we've got the gun cocked. It is empty, and it's pointing into this piece of wood here, so we'll be safe either way. And let's give it a quick squeeze and see what we get. Right, so if we bring this phone back around now, light that screen up, we can see we had our shot, 
and you can see here where we left it quiet and it just went at about 68 decibels we're getting a high there of 78.4 but i actually don't think that's the shot if you can see where we paused there and then fired that's around like i said maybe 65 ish 68 maybe so it is definitely quieter than the artemis that we tested and also the pr 900 that we shot as well so that shroud definitely seems to be doing something. The other thing to bear in mind is obviously the gun will be a lot quieter when there's actually a pellet in there and when you're not in an echoey barn. You can probably hear the rain bouncing off the roof, the um, rooftop now. So that's it for sound testing. So I think it's time we wrap this up and went into the final verdict to see just what we think of the Nova Vista Alpha. Okay then, so Nova Vista Alpha, what do we think with our final verdict? Well, it's a bit of an interesting beast because there's things where, well, I'll put it this way, they've invested the money in the right places when they was designing this, especially the synthetic stock version, what we have here. Yes, the gun has got some peculiarities, shall we say, for instance, the synthetic stock, although they do also come in a wooden version, which we'll probably have to do another review on when they come back in, the synthetic stock is a little strange. If you can hear that, it's a little bit, it's a bit scratchy, it's as plasticky as it looks, I'll put it that way. Um, it's also weirdly designed in the way that that's not actually a weird design cue they've got there but the fact that the stock is actually in three pieces it's not a one-piece stock so bear that in mind when it comes to taking the thing apart um, other than that the trigger whilst definitely it's not the worst we've ever felt it's also not the best it's not as crisp as what we like on the artemis m16 it's a little bit for instance you can see here it's a little loose maybe until you finally get to that second stage then off she goes but again it is an adjustable unit i'm sure you can tune that up just a little bit more to your preference this is pretty much how it's come out the box uh, it's not the best trigger unit in the world at the same time uh, it's, it's not the worst you, you can live with it i'll put it that way but some tweaking and tuning would definitely go a long way into get, making this thing to shoot even better and again the stock isn't all that bad i mean you've got quite a nice bit of like stippling in the grip here and a bit more stippling up front and it's to be honest it's probably i know it's a funny thing to say because it's obviously this is plastic and that's wood but it's got more of an effect on the synthetic version than what you actually have on the wooden version where it's a little bit on the thin side but overall it's as a package in that regard it's quite nice but again slightly strange i mean you do get a power adjuster but the strange thing is at least with the pellets we were testing and in sub 12 feet pounds it doesn't really work. I mean, this one on test, what we had here, it made a difference of about 0.2 foot pound. Um, I've tried it with a few others where we had about one foot pounds difference between them. To be fair, I think it is more designed if you're going into FAC, if you was running this at say 20, 30 foot pound, you'd see a much bigger difference on there. As it is, it's it's present, maybe with a lighter pellet with different higher velocities, you might see a lot more of a, a spread change, but at the same time, it's not, I wouldn't buy it for it. I'll put it that way. Um, on top of this, the safety, oh, I've actually got to, I've got to change and correct myself what I said about the safety earlier. The safety itself is actually not that bad to use once you get used to it and you've got that really nice little uh, like little pellet which is a nib that you flick with your finger. When you get used to it, you can, with your hand on the grip, flick that finger up and pull it backwards and forwards and when you get used to that, it's actually not too bad. So we've got to give it points back for that one. Now, the shroud definitely does its job and it's not, despite how it looks, it is not a plastic shroud. Would you give that a tap? You can hear that. It's a metal shroud. And when it comes to actual shot count and such, you can see here, it's pretty damn good. I mean, I think we said it was a 190 second shot there where you can see it just does not get above 10 feet pound. It's, you've got around 192 shots. And again, I said it earlier, I know, but I don't like saying value for money because I think it's a, a get out of jail card but it's hard not to say that with this gun. Yes, things could be better on it, but at the same time, we charge 299 for the synthetic version, 320 for the wooden stock version. I mean, what else are you gonna get for that money? I mean, the default answer, and it's it, people are right when they say this, if you're looking for a second-hand PCP or a, a budget PCP, get a second-hand Air Arms S410. And this is not a knock at Air Arms or S410s at all. I had an S410 and it was a good gun. But this is cheaper than a second-hand Air Arms S410, and it comes with a warranty. Do you know what I mean? That's why this is the one where I probably would say, do you know what? No, value for money is pretty much 100% of what this gun is. And performance-wise, again, we talked about shot count, but even the, the barrel itself. This was with the multi-shot mag, as we said, 30 yards. Completely devoured 
with the five pence piece. As you can see there, I'll just drag it down a little bit. That was my fault putting it too high. But as you can see there, completely devoured by a five pence piece. Again, rested, but at the same time, this gun, we did put a few, few more pieces of lead through it compared to our first test, what we did. This gun is still not really leaded in. It hasn't had, it's had about a tin through it, tin of pellets, that's about it, just to let it up a little bit. Then we did the same with the single shot tray, which granted the results are slightly worse with 10 shots going through there. But at the same time, I'm quite confident that is either the fleshy bit that's pulling the trigger or the weather, I believe. The wind did pick up a little bit, but I think you can see that in the video footage when you play it back. It's a good gun. And the other good thing about this is that these are with some very cheap pellets. The best result come with the Wasp pellets, not the Ely Wasp, the uh, legendary pellets back in the day, but actually the new Wasps. Thing I will say though, is don't buy the blue tin. If you're thinking of trying it with these, get the purple tin, obviously in the 177, try just the standard red tin of the Wasps. Don't go light blue, trust me, they are terrible. But purple tin and you get some pretty damn stellar results. Even so, we tried some heavier pellets in there, which are 30 yards, sub 12 feet pounds. You can see we did get quite a bit of drop compared to the wasps. But I'll just put that here so you can sort of compare these two with each other. But at the same time, the group is still pretty good. If we put the five pence piece there, can we just about make it? It's almost a five pence piece group. You can probably see a few little tufty bits just coming out the corner there. But yeah, it's in general, they've spent the money in the right places. That's all I'm gonna say. And Again, as we usually say, for target shooters, would you like this gun? Yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And would hunters be interested in this? Well, absolutely. Again, this the stock may be incredibly plasticky, but at the end of the day, you're not gonna worry about knocking it or damaging it or anything like that. And to give it some credit, it has still got quite a nice cheek piece on it. I mean, it didn't quite suit me. Uh, I personally, I was bringing my head up ever so slightly, sort of my chin was sort of down here a bit to get to the scope. It's not quite as pronounced or nicely finished as the Artemis M16, but it does do its job. And the plastic stock itself is quite nice. The bit that comes now is the bit where we say, who's gonna like this and who's not gonna like this gun? If I'm being honest, the only people in my mind that aren't going to like this gun, there's two types of people, and again, it's a case of each to their own. When it comes to preference, no one's right, no one's wrong. The people who aren't going to like this gun are, and they do exist, look, I'm probably one of them my own way, brand snobs, you're not going to like this. If you're used to, or people who have fine, refined tastes, shall we say, if you like your lovely rubberized sort of text, uh, uh, textured stocks, like for the synthetics and ultra smart, two-stage record triggers, this is not really gonna be for you. The other thing I'd say is, if I can just lean back a bit now, uh, it is a very long gun. So if you're slightly shorter in stature, perhaps, it probably isn't gonna agree with you too much. But that being said, it is deceptively light. And as I always say, don't take my word for it. Take yourself down to your nearest RFD, give one a shoulder, and you'll see exactly what I mean. They are a light gun, despite the way they look. But that's pretty much all I can say. And again, the other thing is, advantage for this gun, is if you're a tinkerer, well, if you're a tinkerer, you're gonna love it and hate it at the same time. Um, I've had one of the two of these apart, just we have the occasional, we test each gun that comes in. We had the occasional cheeky little gun that come in ever so slightly over the limit. Um, it's pretty rare, but you do get them. And there's no actual hammer adjuster on the Nova Vista Alpha. The other thing I'll say is it can be a bit of a pain to strip. Um, it's literally, you've got the standard spring and a couple of washers behind it. Um, so if you want to detune the gun, take the, the washers out. And obviously if you want to do a bit more to it, you've got the spring that's right there anyway. But if you're looking into this thinking, right, I'll tweak it just with a screwdriver, put it in the back like the Artemis guns, where let's face it, some of them you don't even have to take the stock off to get to that. Um, it's not like that. You're not going to have an easy time with it. You do have to strip the gun quite a bit. Other thing I'll mention is if you do strip the gun, be careful, one, because you warranty, and two, uh, the pins inside of the action on here are very loose fitting, uh, especially the pin, unfortunately, that holds the trigger sears together. The uh, first time I stripped one, I heard ping, I wonder what that was, and all of a sudden the trigger sears came out and you name it. The gun is well made for the price, don't get me wrong about that, but at the same time, 
just be careful with it if you strip it that's all i'm saying now you do have an adjustable regulator on this i did lie to you earlier because i looked at it and thought it was like the m30s reg that silver screw underneath is not the regulator screw that is actually the air bleed valve if you twist that it will vent the air in the gun which is again another nice feature what you wouldn't expect on a gun of this price the regulator adjuster is actually a big large black screw on the underside of the action again it is a stock off job unfortunately and unlike the artemis m11 and m22 which are i'd put in a similar class or say shape and size to this gun you don't have a regulator pressure gauge coming with it so that is a bit of a disadvantage for this but yeah if you're into tinkering pros you can get to that regulator to make some adjustments but again be very careful with that if you don't know what you're doing personally i wouldn't touch it and the spring there is no hammer adjuster but you can still get to it and say put some washers behind it or take a couple of washers away if you're concerned about power and such overall my honest opinion is I've got no idea how they've made it for the money. <laughs> That's pretty much what I've got to say. I mean, if you get the wooden stock version where the wood isn't actually that bad, if I'm being honest, despite what you might think for the price, it's, it is a ton of gun for the money. It really is. And it really performs as well, even with, like I say, a bit of a prat like me behind the trigger. So overall, I've got to say, I'm impressed. Well impressed. Does it top the Artemis M16 as my favourite PCP? I'm not sure about that but I'll put it this way, it is bloody close. And if Nova Vista, if they've got any future models coming out soon, I don't know about this, but if they do and they further improve on this whilst keeping it as cheap or more or less as cheap sort of thing, I don't know, that could top the M16 because what a start they've had. Anyways, guys and girls, thanks ever so much for watching this review, and I am so sorry it has taken so long to uh, get out. You can blame that on me being stupidly busy, family affairs, and the fact that this weather is absolutely atrocious. So we've had to pick our days when we can. Next up, we're going to have some fun. We're going back to our roots. With, we're going to do a Christmas special on some spring guns. So we're going to take a look at the Virarc HW80, and we're going to compare it to the humble little SMK XS19 Super Grade because I don't think many people have done this at the moment and I want to see, a lot of people say uh, you'll never make a cheaper spring gun shoot as good as a high-end one but I think we should test that theory in fact I think we should give them a face-off one against the other and I think after that if the 19 can't quite match the HW80 we'll set ourselves a budget and see just how close we can get doing a few modifications and see just how close, as we said, that can get to the 80. So that could be pretty good fun. I hope you guys might be looking forward to that as well. As always, if you want us to re review a gun, uh, leave us a few comments down below and we'll get onto it as soon as we can. And thanks ever so much for watching, guys and girls, and take care.